that I can actually take my 2D AI generated images or even just my hand drawn illustrated images um, and create 3D uh, sculpts or models out of those images. Um, so starting from the start, all you have to do is head over to Mid Journey. If not, you don't actually have to go to Mid Journey. You can go to any AI website uh, and generate your images. Uh, I have generated these images purely for this, but I'm actually going to head over to the Discord and I'm going to create something from scratch just so you can see how I do it in action. So I am going to create something that is anime related. Uh, I love using the prompt 3D game. It really gives you that 3D um, element to it. Uh, I'm going to say something a bit more dark. Um, let's have a look. Let's use the creature of a serpent. Let's go for mask, hide, detail, and um, we'll go front view because that's what we want. So uh, Mid Journey is going to do its thing. Uh, I don't know how any other kind of website does this, but I'm sure it would do something similar. Um, the reason why I use Mid Journey is purely just because of how well it it takes my um, my prompt and creates kind of what I want. Gives me the option of obviously. Um, choosing one of four images and then uh, deciding if I want to continue on one of those images or upscale it or even get more renditions of that one image. Um, so you can see it doing its thing here. What we're going to do is not actually take it from Discord because, but we can definitely see how well it's done this. I'm really liking this top right one here. It has like it has it's like a very good shape, perfectly for um, for a mask. Um, don't get me wrong, the bottom left one here is just as good but I'm definitely going to take this top right one here. So because it, that has done its thing, if I refresh my mid journey, yes, that's right. I already have it here. So this being the mask for this demo, I'm going to save this image. I'll save it to my, um, you know what? I'll copy this image. You can use this in anything you want. I'm going to post it into my Photoshop, let's resize this just for this. You don't actually have to do this, just save the image however you want. I just like to be a bit extra. So let's save this, just saving it off to the side here so you guys don't have to see all the other stuff that I'm going through. Uh, mask demo, okay. So now once you have an image saved from AI, it doesn't have to be AI, um, it can be something you've drawn as well. Uh, you could come from a 2D illustrated kind of background, not really knowing too much 3D, and this will be perfect for you. So I'm taking this exact kind of image and I'm heading over to this website here. So I, I am I'm pretty grateful for the video that I fell upon to find this. Uh, this video is uh, out there. Um, I'll probably chuck it in the description. Um, but I'm going to simplify it a bit more as opposed to what uh, the original content creator has created. So you're going to go to image to 3D. You're going to drag or drop in. I'm just going to grab this here. I'm going to grab the image so you can see how my image is right here. Uh, make sure you're an image to 3D uh, and then you're going to hit submit. So this now is going to generate a a, a 3D model essentially based off of that image. And because we went for the front view of this image, we're going to get a pretty good, clean front front view. So as you can see, this is what we got. It's going to take uh, a little bit of like um, time to load in. But you'll see that once I get a little bit closer in onto this model here, slowly. Yeah. Okay. It's probably going to go straight through it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So this model here, once I stop loading, I can actually drag it and I'll show you how I'm getting, I'm getting a 3D kind of plane from it. So if we're happy with this, well, whether you're happy with it or not, that's what you're going to get regardless. You hit download. This is going to download and then uh, this comes on to the next tool you're going to need is Blender. So I found that Blender is the easiest when it comes to this next step, purely because uh, Blender is going to allow you to import the exact file that has just been downloaded to your computer from this website. So if I pull Blender up, you're going to go File, 
you're going to go import and you're going to bring in a GITF 2.0. So you want to load this file. This file here is going to allow you to bring in that, um, that exact download that we just did. So if I go here, I pull this in. There you go. You'll see how it's just been pulled in. Actually, no, this is not the right one. So I'll try it again. That was actually the last one I did. It might be this one. There you go. Cool. So seeing this being the image that we just did, you can see how we've got our 3D side to it. What you want to do, first thing you want to do is you want to snap it to center. Uh, I like to turn on, uh, let's head back to here. I like to turn on texture, actually attribute, and I like to go flat. So once I go uh, straight to attribute and flat, I'm able now to see the texture on my model. So you could already think about the possibilities that you can do just using this exact uh, 3D model. So this being the final result that you get from the website, we're not going to we're not going to finish now. So we're going to take this model here. I'm going to export this model out as an OBJ. Actually, you know what? I might actually export it out as an FBX. So I'm going to export it out as an FBX. I'll pop it into here. We'll call this mask demo. Don't worry about any of this. All right. And then that pulls us into the next program. I like to go into ZBrush. Uh, most people can probably do this in Blender, but I like to go into ZBrush purely because ZBrush um, is where I do most of my sculpting. Um, so let's pull this into ZBrush. Let's double up this. For demos, I like the work of just the stock standard ZBrush screen. I like to keep it simple because some people might freak out. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to hit import. We're going to go to that file. We're going to hit this. You can't see that, but you press enter. I'm going to bring in this model. And there you go, boom. I'm going to change it to like a nice skin shade because I like skin shade. Right, and you'll see exactly there that what we've got. So now the next step is to clean up this model. I will straight up, first things first, is I will get rid of the background. I will go over to modify topology. I'll delete hidden. And then the next thing I'll do is I kind of turn this off to see where I'm at and what kind of mesh I've got. I would like to duplicate this because just in case I make a mistake on this next model here, I've got a backup. Uh, so the next step I'll do is I'll kind of just go to deformation. I like to polish my features. So what that does is gets rid of some of the, uh, some of the actual, the edges of this thing. And there you go. You can see that that hasn't really done anything to destroy the model yet, because I do have a nice bleed around the model. Um, yeah, uh, the next step, other than using this as it is right now, like you can think about the possibilities. I could turn this into a shield. I can turn this into an actual mask. Uh, for let, let's, let's give a couple of demos here. The first step is I'm gonna turn this into a mask. So I'll duplicate this to keep this out from this one here. This next part here, I'm going to get a bit technical. So I'm gonna go into masking and I'm going to go mask lasso. So I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to get um, symmetry up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mask out this mask based on where I want it to stop. So you can be kind of rough. I'm being kind of quick about it, but I'm just slightly getting around the edges just to show you kind of how quick you can do something like this. At the same time, I'm doing this because I want the edges to be a bit more clean. Uh, I do kind of like how it has given me a nice um, open area through the sides here. So this might actually turn out to be uh, pretty good. So because I can't reach that, I'm going to attack it from the other angle. That's right. So then what I do is I hold Control Alt and I'll click on here a few times with left mouse button. What that will do is that will harden up my mask. So then what now I can do is I can actually split the unmask. 
So if I go here, remove that. Now I have, you delete that. Now I have something a bit more closer to the shape that I like. Once again, I'm going to go to polish my features. So I'm going to drag this up a few times. There you go. I have a nice outline, something kind of on the lines that will be acceptable for, you know, for concept. I can put this on a character. I can put this on a piece of armor. I can, you know, I can do kind of like anything with this at the moment. But we're not finished there because you can see how this has no backing. So what we're going to do now is actually create something like a mask. So I like to go quick, the quickest options possible, simple, don't screw around too much. I like to just go straight up extract. We're going to go 0 0.1. We're going to hit extract. It's going to tell you the active mesh is unmasked and we don't mind because we're going to hit OK. So what this is going to do is it's, you probably didn't notice, but it actually extracted this mesh from the original mesh with a diameter of 1.0. If you move your mouse button or in your viewport right now, you're going to get rid of it. See, but now if I hit it again, you'll see I have to do it again. There you go. It's given me something. So I'm going to hit accept. So what that has done is that's created two mesh here. So if I go to this one here, you'll see slightly in the viewport here how it has an extra piece of mesh on top of it. So what I like to do is I like to merge this down. Once this is merged down, now I have a double back face object. So if I get rid of this, you can see how I actually have something I can work with here. Definitely. So the details aren't as high as you would want, especially in the texture that you've got. So that that will pretty much be up to the next part. But uh, to get a good start on, on what we've just done, this is probably the best and most simplest, quickest way you could ever do it. So stay tuned. And, uh, and in part two, let's go over how we can do this next step.